Good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you watch this transmission. It is I, Mike Martins. Uh, really good article here from BNN Bloomberg. Canada's banks at an inflection point sell the big six, analysts says. So what are they talking about? It's plain and simple. I'll keep it as really simple as, ooh, I missed three calls from Amazon. Bull crap. Anyways, let me tell you what it is in very basic terms. It's book value of the company, okay, from what I remember. Uh, book value of the company is determined by equity divided into the outstanding shares in the company is how you get a book value, of, a proper book value of a company. Equity divided by shares outstanding. And that starts to change the dividend payouts and ratios and blah, blah, blah. So let's read this and see what happens because this is – um, a turning point here with banks being shorted, but banks continue to grow. What is happening? Vitra's investment investment research downgraded Bank of Montreal on Tuesday. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Meaning it now has uh, has sell recommendations on all Canada's six banks. On the heels of underwhelming first quarter earnings, the firm warned investors due to lenders' exposure and potential credit losses. So a lot of these banks do have massive exposure out there and b nothing's built to last forever and nothing's built to continue and keep going forever. And a lot of it's propped with a lot of underlying things that are happening. Canada doesn't have a Royal Commission like Australia did. Uh, Royal Commission went in Australia, started digging around and poking around and they started finding a lot of things uh, that were happening. And I, I kind of wish Canada had a royal commission to go in, on, almost like a higher, like a high level underwriters, to go in and underwrite all the banks and see what's on the books, what's what was fudged, what numbers were fudged, what was brought in, what are they charging customers for, basically charging for no service, and that is something I'm, I like to caution people about because it's dangerous, um, collecting. Um, bank fees from a deceased person instead of calling up the next of kin and says and saying your uncle has two million dollars do you want it or we're going to keep charging this eight thousand dollars a year so things like that and it's really scary we caution the sector likely likely facing an inflection point in the credit cycle and that's so let's look this up together okay inflection point let's look this up together guys i don't know everything Okay, inflection. The change in a form of a word, typically the ending, to express grammatical function or attributes such as tense, mood, person, number, case, and gender. Conjugation is okay. Uh, the mo the modulation of intonation, pitch in a voice. Okay, so it's fancy words to say basically uh, crisis point or or. It's at the highest or, or, or burning point or boiling point in, the, in its credit cycle and that investors should reduce exposure to Canadian banks ahead of an acceleration of credit losses, wrote analyst Nigel de Souza, Portuguese bunny all the way, in a note to clients. Uh, Virtuous sent set at a price target of $95 for Bank of Montreal, which declined slightly afternoon trading down 0 0.45 cents. Uh, sorry, 0.45% to $100.52 100, as of 2.28 p.m. Eastern Time. The Souza told BNN Bloomberg on Tuesday that BMO's fundamentals made it the final Canadian bank to hold out the firm's buy side, but that the stock is currently trading at a premium. So again, guys, when stocks are trading at, at a premium, there's tangibility there with good, 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 uh, what do you call it, goodwill? Right, and again, it goes back to basics. Uh, it's book value. Uh, book value. Finding the book value of any company is very simple. It's equity divided by shares outstanding, and that is going to give you an outlook of what the dividends are going to pay out, what uh, you could forecast for potential uh, buybacks and draws within the company or defaults. We initially had BMO. As a buy, and we have a favorable view on the underlying business at BMO, he said. It's just not really a function of stock having run up BMO 
uh, trading at a premium to its historical valuation has led to us to downgrade the stock in light of our expectations for slowing economic growth and higher credit losses through the year. So they're actually creating a buffer with the banks to make sure that they have this 20-30% buffer there in place. So when when the poop does hit the fan, it's it's like raising interest rates. You raise interest rate right to create this aggregation so when the poop does hit the fan you have a little bit of a buffer to kind of shield a bit of the storm right australia lowered interest rates and and their dollars going to get punished in the next couple of quarters however the Souza says his call to sell canada's big banks differ from similar bets from some u.s hedge fund managers often dubbed the great white short so it's a great white north it's a great white short a lot of my friends right now are shorting a lot of the canadian banks remember guys i am not giving you advice banking advice or uh do not take advice from an illiterate like myself we're just creating conversation in the comments below um so let's do that guys don't take any advice i'm saying guys this is just reading articles and people are up to um their opinions and they're also up to creating their own way of uh, doing their own research, okay? For instance, Steve Esmond, a portfolio manager at Nuremberg Berman uh, and the investor ben, best known for his successful bet against the U.S. housing market in the book film The Big Short, recently took aim at Canada's banks. I covered that like, like a year ago. Uh, last week, Esmond said, told the Financial Times, he believes that Canada's lender will be hurt by struggling economy and weakening housing market. And I think this is the same guy that bet against Vancouver that it was going to crash. I think the U.S. hedge fund perspective on the Canadian financial sector, the bear thesis has really been driven by the same thesis for the last five or seven years, really born out of financial crisis, DeSouza said. I think our thesis is differentiated because we have a specific a mechanism that we predict the credit loss cycle accelerating so whether someone wants to play that as a short and underweight depends on the investment mandate of their risk profile guys for the longest time most of my life i've been high risk my portfolio has always been high risk and i've done okay hit and miss over the years so in this report uh, Verdietas argued mounting provisions for credit losses in the group's physical first quarter likely wasn't one-time phenomenon. While some market participants may view elevated credit risk in Q1 F19 as a product of indiscrecy and a non-reoccurring factors, we argue that the quarter likely marks an infection point in the credit cycle, according to De Souza. As long as Canada's household debt, uh, blah, 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 advice, lighten up. Oh, well, well, sorry, guys. I'm getting messages here. This, this is a wrote, investors would be well advised to lighten up on the banks. Our concern rests in more domestic consumer lending. Everyone's maxed out. How are you going to buy that blender? You can't buy it on your credit card anymore. Service costs combined with softening real estate market and more restrictive regulatory measures. Continuing to stress Canadians' households, Veritras wrote on Tuesday. We note that delinquency rates among banks and that disclose retail delinquencies moved higher sequentially across all retail loan categories, including mortgages, personal loans, credit cards, and secured or unsecured lines of credit. So let's say that again. Among the banks to disclose retail delinquencies move higher se uh, sequentially across the retail loan categories. So it's if so delinquencies, uh, a lot of banks are up and they're exposed. They're up and ready to. They're, 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 they're basically they got all this bad debt that they've they've they, that they've lent out. That's creating. That's creating a buffer for the upcoming perfect storm I've been talking about. So what's going to happen is it's going to start falling apart. All the bad debt's going to start falling apart and defaulting. And they're going to hope, you know, that they create this buffer in warning people a 20 to 30 percent kind of, of 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 a loss or a dip. Right. So uh, credit cards are secured and unsecured lines of credit. So everyone is going to be hit really hard. With this, I am severely concerned for a lot of people out there. 
that overborrowed. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. Uh, guys, if you want to hit me up um, and support the, the transmission, uh, please share one of my videos and get me out there. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I've been doing this for tons of years now. And I want to thank everyone for taking their time to listen to this transmission. And I want to thank everybody for uh, being there for me. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think. Banks at inflection point. Is it just a fancy word to deflect what they're trying to say? Or is it a word that we all need to add into our vocabulary? Comment below. Let me know.